Hello and welcome to the Embedded C Programming Design Patterns course. This course is available here on YouTube. And also, if you don't want to wait until the next module comes out, you can get this course as a book, as book plus videos, Udemy course, and also all of the book and video content, as well as live sessions with me on Wednesdays, which is available at SwedishEmbedded.com. So the book is available on Kindle. You can download it uh, from Amazon. The Udemy course contains the book materials as uh, resources, as PDFs here. And on the website, we have the course available as a standalone course uh, directly on the website. You just click join here, enter your details, register as a student, and then you will have access to all the course materials and also the weekly Q&A, which is uh, in five days, eight hours at the time when I'm recording this. All right, so let's get on with the next module of this course. Hello and welcome to another module of this Swedish Embedded Design Patterns training. My name is Martin Schroeder, and if you have any questions, you can always join our Discord. You'll find a link at swedishembedded.com, or you can email me at martin.schroeder at swedishembedded.com. So let's get started. Inheritance is by definition is not something that you usually do in C because the C language itself doesn't actually support inheritance uh, from the language standpoint. So the C language just provides you with basic uh, ways of writing your code, but it doesn't actually have inheritance support built into the language. So we, we need to add additional uh, philosophy around inheritance so that we can implement it in C. And it's, it's a good thing to, to do it because it helps you to structure your code. So the defining characteristics of inheritance is that you get um, you have derived classes that contain the base class data. So any class that essentially includes another structure has full access to that data structure if the relationship between those two classes is defined as inheritance. Uh, number two is that derived object uh, is tightly coupled to the base data. So you can modify the base data, you can directly access it, you can provide additional methods that operate on the base class data. So that's the defining characteristic of inheritance. If, you, if there is no such connection, then it's more of a has a relationship. So you have uh, one object that contains another object and then all of the calls, all of the operations on that uh, base object are actually uh, done through the base object methods. And that is not uh, entirely inheritance. It's just having another variable to, to operate on. Inheritance is, is actually defined by the uh, specific um, relationship to the base class data that you can actually modify it directly. And number three is that derived object must provide uh, method wrappers if there is any uh, functionality that needs to be exposed to the uh, to the user of the derived object because C language doesn't provide that functionality. It cannot, you cannot just uh, derive another object and get all of the methods by default, since uh, the way that we do it in C is that we prefix our methods with a with a specific um, name of the object that they're designed to operate on. If you remember the the object pattern, so uh, when we derive another object, we have to basically explicitly um, provide uh, corresponding methods in the derived object that then just forward the calls to the appropriate methods in the base object. But this, the benefit of this is obviously that it makes things a little bit more clear as well. So why would we want to use inheritance at all in C programming? Well, number one is code reuse, because uh, in C programming, one of the biggest problems is code reuse, since you don't have this natural way of inheriting functionality between different types of objects. Um, we, we want to, we have to kind of do it manually um, and we have to uh, implement the inheritance pattern in order to facilitate code reuse. One example of this is, um, for example, list objects where we want to arrange uh, arbitrary data structures into lists and we would like to reuse the list functionality, um, which basically means the methods that insert objects into a list um, and uh, re delete objects from that list. So we want to reuse that functionality. And uh, through the inheritance concept, we get this uh, code reuse of basic functionality. Number two is that we would like to have generic data structures. So uh, one of the biggest uses of inheritance in C is uh, specifically the list example that I just discussed, because um, what we do is we embed the list node into any data structure that we would like to arrange into lists. And uh, we then have uh, the container off macro uh, that we use to, to retrieve the pointer to the enclosing object. So we can basically reuse the, the code that um, is responsible for arranging things into lists and traversing lists. And then we can um, 
have additional, uh, we can basically retrieve our uh, actual object pointer and then do operations on that object. And number three is extending other objects. So we can have uh, one object inheriting from a base class, and then we can add additional functionality to it, and we can call the uh, other functions that are part of the base class, but then we add additional features to that, to that object. And essentially we get a new type, um, which is the derived class. And then we, uh, when we operate on that type, we always call the derived methods uh, to, to do any operations of that type. But um, we can achieve code reuse by uh, having a base type to which we then delegate some of this functionality. So what are some of the benefits then of using the inheritance pattern in C? Well, number one is that we get clean design. We can hierarchically arrange all of the data in our application, and so we get much cleaner design. And uh, we get also clear expectations because uh, we, we can reuse the same object in many different places. And when we know the expectations that we place on, on, the, on one of the base classes, we know that we can expect the same thing in every place where that base class is used. One example is that a lot of the times in C, what I've seen many times uh, teams do is that they try to re-implement the same functionality from scratch, essentially, for different objects. For example, if you want to arrange something in lists, you might uh, implement custom list uh, methods for every type that you want to arrange into list. And that creates a confusion because now you don't know what to expect. So you cannot, since you're not reusing the same code in every instance of that implementation, you don't know um, how each uh, of the different implementations work. So uh, by using the inheritance pattern, we can create clear expectations. And number three is that we get much simpler way of understanding the code because now we can arrange things in hierarchical uh, structure and it's much easier to understand things on different abstraction levels when we have this hierarchical structure in place. But of course it presupposes that you use the object pattern at the core and uh, you actually start uh, by uh, separating all of the functionality in your application into different uh, isolated objects and then combine those objects through inheritance pattern into more complex structures. And the main drawbacks of this pattern is that you can run into a situation where you have unnecessary code. So for example, if you wrap uh, methods of the base class in the derived class and uh, you just have lots of different methods that just forward that functionality to the base class you end up with code that is not really needed but it's it's not that much so it might not be a problem if it's only done in in a few places but uh, if you really um, use that pattern a lot you, you might end up with a lot of code that is not even used Number two is that uh, you get this violation of encapsulation. So because, the, because the, the whole concept of deriving from one object is that you have full access to the data of that object as well, you uh, break encapsulation essentially when you try to access the data directly. Um, and uh, if you don't uh, access the data directly, then it's, it's not really um, the same as deriving from an object. So um, inheritance pattern by definition get, gives you this uh, drawback that uh, you are uh, breaking the encapsulation of the base class. And the third point is that it becomes a little bit more complex. So you start, um, you, you now have multiple levels of um, abstractions and uh, the derived class essentially depends on the implementation of the base class. So you can have a situation where you make a change in the base class and maybe you don't have all of the tests in place. And this is, by the way, why testing is so important. Um, so you don't maybe have all of the tests in place and just changing something in the base class would modify the functionality of the derived class. And now uh, the derived class would behave differently than what, than what you expect. So it's really important that if you use any kind of inheritance in your software at all, that you uh, verify all of the important expectations that you place on the derived class so that if uh, you make any changes to the base class and the, the derived class breaks, that you can easily discover uh, those breaking points and you can fix those bugs before they actually uh, pose a problem in the, in the final application. Now let's move on to the implementation of inheritance in C. And I just wanted to keep it very, very simple. So um, I just 
created this slide with a simple object that derives from two base classes. And this is essentially it. It's, it's very, very simple. So in C, you don't have any language constructs that help you with the inheritance concept. So it's kind of all in, um, in the conventions that you apply to your source code rather than in the language itself. So in this case, we have a convention that we have an object called my object that derives from two other objects. So we have a base one and base two. And um, the idea here is that we have full access to the data of base one and base two in any of the implementation methods of the derived class. So uh, we, we can just uh, reference it through the self pointer and just say self arrow base one and then have some data there that we can modify and base two with, with its own corresponding data that we can modify. So let's look at a more concrete example. And in this case, we're going to take the list example because it's the simplest and most useful uh, concept that, that you would use a lot in C. And uh, the list, uh, this implementation is taken from Zephyr Artos. And uh, this implementation uh, basically defines two different types. So we have a list node and we have a list um, type, which has a head and a tail. And then we have a bunch of methods also that help us operate on this list. But for the purpose of this uh, training, I just want to look at the data structure itself. So we have two different types. We have syslist node and the uh, uh, sys list uh, type, which is basically uh, the list itself. And now when we have this type, we can inherit a list item by simply embedding it into our object. So in this case, we are embedding the list item here. And basically what this says is that we can now treat uh, this object as a list item. And in this case, we don't use um, the derived class methods to, to do this arrangement. We just use the list uh, methods directly. So in this case, we uh, embed this list object here and we can then cast. So what we are essentially doing is we are casting from the my object type to a list node. And uh, we then use this list node directly with, with the list methods. So in this case, we can initialize a list. In this case, it's, it's this uh, S list type list and we can then add items to this list so this operation here where we create a pointer to this um, actually this should be node here so it should say it should say node um, since so it's node here as well uh, this operation uh, is essentially the same as uh, casting from my object type to the base type so in this case it would be the list item which is the best the base type and when we do this, we can now treat our objects, uh, our instances of my object, the same way as we treat instances of a list. So we can arrange them into a list and we can do list operations on it. We can insert items uh, of this type into a list. We can delete items of this type from the list. So if we look at the uh, simple iterations through such a list, basically what we do is we use the same, uh, we use the uh, macros provided by the list implementation. In this case, it's sys s list for each node and uh, we then get a node from this iteration so what we do is we use container off to co convert this node to the um, uh, to the uh, struct my type pointer so in this case we get my my object uh, self uh, equals container off struct my object node and if you remember from the previous slide here we had the node here so basically we get um, here the pointer to my object and then we can do normal operations with uh, with with the my object type just like we would do in any other situation so in this case we have inherited from the list object and then we uh, casted from the inherited type to the base type and then we used the base type to arrange things into a list and in much the same way we can also achieve multiple inheritance in C well, in C, it's not actually like there is no uh, language concept of multiple inheritance. It's just something that you create conceptually. So basically you have your base class one, base class two, and uh, you have the corresponding init methods uh, for both types uh, and then any operations that operate on, on any one of these types. And then you have your derived class that basically includes those two objects. And this is all conceptual, like there is no actual language mechanism to uh, enforce inheritance. So we're just uh, kind of creating this conceptually, just like with many other design patterns. The purpose of the design patterns is to help you arrange your code in a sensible way. But then there is a lot of um, concepts that you just need to apply to, to your source code 
uh, where the language doesn't actually help you. So you have your derived type, you have your derived init method, and uh, the convention that uh, is very good to use is to call the init methods of every of the base type, every instance of the base type. So in this case, we have base one, we call the base one init, we have base two, we call base two init, and then we have the derived type uh, do something, and then it basically operates. Maybe it forwards this call to one of the functions of base one. And uh, when we use the derived type, we just deal with the derived type functions. So we create our derived type, we initialize it, we, we call derived do something. And then this um, also acts kind of like a facade for the base objects where it forwards the method uh, to one of the base objects. But essentially it could also access the data directly. And another variation of the, uh, of the inheritance pattern that we can use is the trait pattern. We will use this pattern much more in the virtual API implementation, but in this module, I'm going to show you a very simple way to implement traits. So what is a trait? Basically, a trait is a structure that implements a bunch of function pointers. And uh, we can have a trait that has several operations that belong to that trait. So for example, if we have a list item, maybe we have um, some method as part of the list item that says, you know, you can remove this item from a list. But uh, you can have, for example, a circle that you can render. So that would be rendering would be one of the traits. So a rendering trait, anything that is renderable would obviously have some method called render, which would be different for every type that implements that trait, but the trait itself would be the same. So that's kind of the whole idea of traits. You, you have a, a number of methods that correspond, that describe a certain uh, functionality and all of those methods together correspond to a trait. So in this case, we have trait X, which has do X method. We have a trait Y, which has do Y method. And then we have uh, implementations of these methods. Basically trait X uh, do something, and then it calls just uh, the trait method itself and passes the trait pointer to that method. And this is by the way, the same as with the callback pattern where we pass the callback uh, callback is actually a trait. So the callback itself is actually a trait, but traits are more generic. So in this case, we're expanding on our understanding of callbacks and we kind of generalize uh, callbacks as traits. And we can then derive from those traits. So we can have a derived class with traits and we have two traits, trait X and trait Y. And we then implement those methods for each trait. And uh, in, in our initialization function, we assign uh, the callbacks to, to each one of these traits. And after we have done this, we can then call each trait uh, as we, we can call the trait method on this um, object. So we basically here cast from our derived class to the trait itself. And then we can call the trait methods on that trait. And, and that will ultimately convert to uh, the actual implementation that is specific for the derived class. So in this case, we have the derived class implementing those traits. Uh, so this is derived specific. We, we use container off to get uh, the pointer to our derived. And um, when we call the generic trait method, we essentially this translates to the, to the call to the specific derived class method. So that's the different uh, versions of inheritance in C. It's, it's really simple. There aren't many variations, but the, the variations that we do have, they are quite useful in different situations. So let's look at the best practices of using inheritance in C. Number one is of course that you should always use the object pattern at the bottom. If you don't use the object pattern, you will find it hard to create any kind of meaningful inheritance because inheritance presupposes that, that you can work with objects. Uh, so object pattern is the most important one uh, to have at the, at the bottom of this, um, of your software design. Number two is that you should understand the role of inheritance. And the primary role of inheritance is that you want to achieve code reuse, but also you want to uh, keep your functionality hierarchical so that it's easier to maintain. And when, whenever you need to uh, forward one of the base class methods to the derived class, you would use a wrapper uh, in the derived class. And uh, number four is that uh, you should always keep your trait callback static. And the reason for that is that if we go back to the trait callbacks, 
um, and we look at this function here, if this function was defined in some other file outside of the of the C file that defines this derived class, then there wouldn't be any guarantee that container off would return the correct type. So it's the same as with the callbacks. You should always make those methods static and define them exactly in the same implementation file where you initialize this trait. And the main pitfalls of this of this pattern is that you can have a fragile base class. So if if you have structured your code in such a way that uh, some changes to the base class uh, would ultimately break the expectations of the derived class, then it's very important that you have thorough testing. But if you have thorough testing, then it doesn't matter because you always discover any um, inconsistencies in your code. And this is one of the main reasons actually for testing is that when you have those kinds of, kinds of relationships where um, some code can be broken by uh, changes to the base class, then the tests is the primary way of discovering those problems early before uh, you actually have to discover them or debug them in the final application. Number one is code duplication, and this is uh, more common. Like for example, if you use the the pattern incorrectly, and you you have to you find yourself that you have to expose uh, a lot of the base class methods in the derived class, then you'll have a lot of code that uh, that is basically just dead code that that you just have to create methods for forwarding calls to the base class. And uh, number three is uh, trying to implement inheritance before uh, understanding the object pattern. So if you try to uh, create those kinds of relationships before you created the object pattern, you'll still have to kind of refactor your code later because you, you have to start with the object pattern. It's really important that you first try to separate things into distinct objects. And only after that, uh, you can consider uh, how those objects inherit from each other. So what alternatives do we have to this pattern? And uh, the primary alternative is, of course, improving the base class. So if there is some functionality that uh, would make sense to have as part of the base class, you should definitely include it in the base class instead of uh, inheriting from the base class and then having a new type, basically, that uh, has this functionality too. So um, the primary way that you should use is to improve the base class. If, if it really does not make sense to have uh, some additional functionality in the base class, then of course you consider the inheritance pattern. But inheritance pattern is more of a case where you um, combine multiple functionalities from different other objects, and then you create a new type uh, with this enhanced functionality. Now, alternative number two is virtual API pattern, which we'll cover later. And uh, this pattern is um, basically a pattern where you share handles to the uh, to the traits. So we improve on the trait concepts and, and we actually make sure that we don't um, need to use too much memory for storing the traits. So virtual API pattern is a more generic way of implementing traits. And number three is the facade pattern, which is basically designed to simplify the um, API to an object. So it's kind of like you inherit from an object and then you simplify the API. You have one object that has very complex API, maybe you need to create, maybe you need to make multiple calls to achieve something. And then you have, you create a facade which simplifies that functionality. So it's much easier to use for the, for the application code. A quick recap of what you should have learned in this training. So you should understand the inheritance in C and how we do it. It's very simple, really. There isn't um, there isn't as much variation in C as it is, for example, in C plus plus. Number two is you can you understand the multiple inheritance and uh, what it looks like in C. Number three is you uh, number three is that you understand trait objects and uh, what the meaning is of trait objects and when you should use trait objects. So basically traits are groupings of functionality that multiple different other objects can implement. And then you can treat those objects as a single, um, as, a, as an object that has basically that trait. Let's now check your understanding of this material. Question number one is, what are the main reasons for using inheritance in your software architecture? What is this uh, concept trying to achieve? How does it help you uh, structure your code? Uh, 
Number two is how is multiple inheritance pattern implemented in C and uh, what naming convention do we use uh, when we are naming the methods uh, to make this easier to maintain? So basically, uh, how do you name the methods uh, of your derived class compared to the base class that those method methods correspond to? So you're going to create uh, like wrapper methods that basically have the prefix of your derived class, but then forward the call to the appropriate base class method. What are the benefits of using traits and how do they relate to multiple inheritance? So you can have, obviously you can inherit multiple traits and actually traits are, are more common in the, in the uh, when you use multiple inheritance because it kind of makes sense to inherit multiple traits. So you can have multiple uh, groupings of functionalities that you inherit from and then you implement those functions and uh, it, it makes a lot of sense uh, when, when you have, uh, when you inherit from multiple traits and then you can treat your objects as multiple different uh, types of objects. What are the main drawbacks? Uh, what, what, do, what, what are the main drawbacks that traits have um, when they are embedded into the derived struct compared to pure virtual interfaces? And this is something we'll answer in more detail in the virtual API pattern. Um, so uh, if, if you haven't watched that uh, series yet, uh, you can uh, go there and, and watch it. So I'll see you in the next module and I hope you learned something. Bye for now.